Hey guys, welcome to episode 6 of Kadawa Shoujo. But before we... But, but... But, uh, so before we continue on things, I'd like to remind you guys to like, comment, and subscribe, and share the video. It'll help our... It'll help push our channel growth forward. And also, I'd like... I'd like to remind you guys to enjoy the video and to be safe while we are watching. And with that being said, let's get on it. When we last left off, we had just come back from lunch with, with Lily and Hanako. And we came back to class. And we also got knocked on our ass by Emmy, too. What is it? Nakai? I jump at him addressing me. But I guess it's natural to sp spark some conversation since there's no one else around. Um, nothing. Thinking about what I, I'd do after school. The teacher slowly puts a cap on the pen he's holding, arranging the papers into a stack, clacking it against the desk twice. It seems very methodical and, and a bit, and for a brief moment, I'd remind of Shizune, but the teacher is more unhurried and relaxed and much more routine. You have no plans? No, I considered joining a club, but but don't know what kind of club would interest me. Go and observe a meeting of someone else's club. Might pique your interest, I guess. I just... But I don't know what, how to continue from there. Moto looks at me in a way that makes me quickly want to take the words back to avoid a conversation. But I can't, so I have to forge ahead. I just don't know how to deal with people, I mean, the other students. I'm, talking to people and everything, so it's not that I'd be isolated or anything, I just don't know what to think about, and with disabilities, it's like, it feels that I'm being impolite if I pay attention to them, and it's weird to ignore them. Damned if I do, damned if I don't. The teacher stretches his, scratches his, his cheek, absentmindedly looking very unresponsive. These things are only an issue if you make them one. You can talk normally with someone, even if they're blind or something. Try to look behind the superficial. There is not a single student here who, who isn't just a normal kid behind whatever they might seem at first glance. He says the same thing as Yuko did. I know they're right, but it's hard. How can you not consider, for example, Shizuna's deafness, when the only way to communicate with her is to talk through Misha? Or Hanako, it's not a... Or Hanako, it's not a... Like you can avoid her face, but I'm interrupted by the door of the classroom suddenly slamming open. Teacher! Misha crashes in and in hand and straight in an enthusiastic greeting, her voice loud and lively enough to wake the dead from their graves. She stir starts towards the teacher's desk with her bouncing step and hands ener energetically swinging into the rhythm. Moto is visibly dismayed at the interruption, and Misha, in general, slumps in, slumps in, in his slump, slumps in his chair. Mikado. Misha stops in his tracks and looks around cluelessly, as if she's sensing his tone that something is wrong, but has no idea what. Yes, we have we have talked about volume control before. Yes, but she doesn't lower her voice at all, and the teacher just rubs his eyes. So what is it? I... We need help. We are running out of supplies for the festival stands. This is a distress. She waves a pink slip of paper she is holding around. So go get more supplies from the art room. What's the problem with that? Plywood. Plywood is always is the problem. Last time we wanted more and there was only a little. But, but that time we just took it and all and went with that. Now there's like there's none left there, so do you know where there is some? I don't understand. How would I know? Shi Chan, I mean, the president thought that a teacher would know if there was plywood. Was she wrong? Moto looked like Moto looks like he's in great pain, frowning with his entire essence, and Misha doesn't get it at all. Looking at the two of them communicate is horrible, terrible like looking at a man being tortured by drilling his skull open while blasting pop music at full volume at the same time. 
I'm afraid I have no idea where there is plywood in the school, let alone where it would be if there was any. Aww, uh, what should I do? Perhaps try and find Mr. Nomiya. I'm quite sure he would know where to find everything you need. You'd have to pry them from his cold, dead hands, but that's a different matter. Uh, I don't have any time. We're so busy. She looks at her head with both of her hands looking as despairing as possible for a person like her, without even noticing she crumples on the note she's holding against her hair. I don't think even fetching these things... I shouldn't even be fetching these things. There's so much to do and we're falling behind the schedule. Moto looks at her gravely and then suddenly smiles. Smiling doesn't really fit his face. I think it'd be better if he didn't. I wonder if you could get some temporary help. He switches his staring at me, focusing on his hard expression and trying to say, go make some friends. <laughs> uh, I guess I can give you a hand. You can? Thanks, he chan you're really nice. She pauses, does a double take and then points at me with her finger yelling, ah, and it's looking very puzzled. Come to think of it, what's he chan doing here? Class is over, you should be having fun. We just had a little chat. Oh no, it's not detention, is it? Are you in trouble, He Chan? No, I'm not. Is He Chan in trouble, teacher? No, he's not. Moto sighs deeply, and I feel like I have to help Misha to get her off the teacher's back. So, what do you need? There is a list. Here's a list. I can try to find some plywood from somewhere if there's none in the art room. If she offers me the note she's holding, I take it, hesitating a bit. I said I'd help you, but this is no implication of whether I'm joining the student council or not. Aww. Still thanks, Yi chan Try to be quick. We are in the stall building streak now, and we must hurry, hurry, hurry. She b bounces out of the classroom, leaving me and the teacher looking at the other with something that feels like a little silent agreement. Well, there you have it, Nakai. You have something to do now. Please don't sound so smug. Looking at the list with a number of items, ranging from paint to plywood, all written in small, neat handwriting, that's undoubtedly Shizune's. I leave, I heave, I sigh. I'll be going then. Waving the long list of limply at the teacher as I exit the hallway. The classrooms closest to ours are designated belonging to class 3-1 and 3-2 on the right side, 3-4 on the left side, each looking exactly the same. Further down the corridor, still with identical doors, as are rooms that I don't think were used for classes. I guess the art room is not a classroom as such. I carefully push open the furthest door and peek in. It's a classroom, but it seems rather badly kept or not in use. Am I in the right place? Desks and chairs are all around the room, a thin layer of dust settle on them. There are some easels in the corner, so at least it lo this looks like the right place. This room is flushed in sunlight from the big windows, shadows creeping all over the desks. Specks of dust are dancing in the stagnant air and making beams of light almost visible. Jokingly, I call onto the empty room, anyone ho- something snatches- m something catches my eye and I stop mid-sentence. Sitting on a desk is a short-haired girl, curiously wearing a boy's uniform with a fork between her toes, a morsel of food stuck firmly on the end. This is an odd way of dining. Seems to be caused by her apparent lack of hands, but her presence here is what makes it me aback, takes me aback even more. How did I miss her before? She's sitting in the corner very still, but somehow took I somehow took her as part of the furnishing, or a statue at first glance. I'm not being too observant today as a whole. The girl seems to be frozen in place, staring at me with her huge eyes like a rabbit in headlights. She seems st she's staring at me, her mouth wide open, ready to accept the fork. I'm staring at her mouth wide open, suddenly remembering that if I, don't, I didn't finish my sentence and trying to think if I should. This weird stalemate keeps us both stunned into silence, punctuated only by the wall clock ticking rhythmically. Hello. The girl sh stuffs the fork full in her mouth and is now staring at me expectantly while chewing. This is a bit awkward. 
Um, hello. I was told to pick up some art supplies from here for some festival stalls. I think I... I think... I didn't think there'd be someone here. There isn't. That's why I came here too. She picks up another forkful. Does that mean you're here then? She raises her eyebrows if she suspected my observation was false. You're pretty observant. I guess it does. But who are you? The girl's pretty straightforward, isn't she? I'm Nakai. He saw Nakai. I just transferred in on Monday. I'm Rin, Tezuka Rin. Rin Tezuka. I won't shake hands with you, but at least we know we know who we are now. That's very nice. Her deadpan manner of talking makes it hard to determine whether she's whether she's joking about shaking hands or not. It kind of bothers me. Joking about these matters doesn't feel appropriate at all. Well, I'm trying to figure out what's appropriate. Whether this girl is, she, she seems to have lost interest in me and is now gazing yearningly back at her food. Can I continue my lunch, if you don't mind me? I won't mind you. If you need to get your stuff, the supplies are in the back. Go right ahead, but lunch? School's already over for the day. What, what word would you use then? There is no word for a meal to eat after lunch, but before dinner, right? It bothers me very much too, but I don't really know what I should say. I don't think you're supposed to eat a meal between lunch and dinner to begin with. But I'm hungry now, and my delicious box lunch will go to waste otherwise. I have curry. It's very delicious. With very much decisiveness, Rin once again picks up the fork between her toes with at least as much impoliteness. He points it straight at me. So, Nakai, what brings you to this place? Like I said, I was told to look for these things. No, the school from the outside. You look fine. Is your problem inside? I come to a full stop opening my mouth, but not like getting the word out. I I can guess. I'm good at guessing. Better than most people. Rin cuts me off before I can answer her question. Or skirt around it somehow. I don't know which I should would have done. I froze in the issue again. I haven't even told anyone about where my condition, or maybe it's only because I hasn't really come up. I do get the feeling that not making issues of this part of the school in Code War, as the teacher said. I wonder if the people here could relate. Probably not better any better than any normal person could. I can't relate to Shizune's circumstances or Louis either. Naturally, while I go through this in my head, Rin keeps considering what my condition could be with an overly competitive look on her face. She puts her fork between her lips and leans back looking at the ceiling as if the answer is written up there. A beam of light illuminates her face from the window side, creating a mask of dark shadow on the other side. I don't think there's anything in your head or something in your gut that's boringly ordinary like this lunch of mine and less delicious. The problem must be in your pants. This messed up Sherlock Holmes kind of statement and her sheer lack of tact was delivered with the catch of complete off guard. Yo, I can't, I, I, I don't know what's wrong with this guy, but I'm guessing the problem is in within his cock. I think I might have been reeled back <laughs> and was physically, really, 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 really astonishment. So I was right, there is something wrong with your tackle, isn't there? Still practically in shock, but recognizing the need to rep reply something, I spit out the first thing I could think of. No, nothing like that of a heart problem, arrhythmia. I said it, more like blurted it out, but I said it. The girl in front of me purses her lips together and glowers at me, looking very disappointed. How boring. Trouble in the pants would have been more, much more scandalous. What's with this reaction? I'm sorry I let you down. I forgive you, Just I just collect people with... And a person with, you know, that kind of problem would have been really great. Collect people? People with different problems. Uh, so you just, like, go around asking people what's wrong with them? Pretty much. I see. There's a little left to say. Rin resumes her lunch, and the, car, and the conversation drives, dies away. But I keep thinking about what she said. It's the first time I told anyone else about my condition. All the other people have either known about it already, or heard about it from someone else. Or didn't need to know about it. Like everyone other, every other student so far. 
should I have told it as a natural part of instructions? Is it expected of me? I mean, so I have a very serious heart condition. Is that how I'm supposed to go around introducing myself from now on? As if our disabilities would define us? What a disgusting thought. Or maybe this Tezuka girl is just an unusual interest in such things. As I walk around the back of the room picking up the items on Misha's list, a chance opens to study Rin in the corner of my eye. Her hair is a, is a burnt auburn, almost orange, and cropped short, long hair, and would be probably impossible in the arms. The boy's uniform and the lack of arms that, that make her look very thin, almost scrawny. She's not particularly pretty, except for her murky green eyes, which flicker restlessly from her short bangs, even when she eats. <sighs> At distance, and the sh shadows make it seem like they don't reflect sunlight at all, but instead absorb it all within them in like deep wells. She moves her feet along, and you know, definitely a normal person would use their arms. However, I can see see how this sight could could discomfort people, especially while eating. It makes me feel a bit uncomfortable, at least. I hesitate to think about the word unnatural, but it's too late now, isn't it? I keep searching the cabins and shelves for Misha's things, but after enough time passes, the silence grows too uncomfortable, so I try to force some conversation out of this strange girl. So do you always eat? No, so you always eat alone this late, or do you, or do you get the occasional visitor? Visitors, maybe. You are the first occasional visitor, but I don't always eat alone either. Sometimes eat with a certain person on the roof if she's not horsing around. Horsing? She likes to do sports. Oh, and that's all I can think to see. Both of us fall silent again as Rin forks the last bit of her meal to her mouth. I, I, I look around the, at my hall and double check it with Misha's list. I seem to have everything except plywood. Um, so I think I have all the things now. It's very nice of you. Don't feel obliged to stay. I was about to take a nap anyway. You need to... You need to do whatever you're going to do with that stuff anyway, right? Or perhaps do you like watch girls sleeping? Eh, uh, I'm not sure what to make of this, but Rin looks serious. Even if I did, I think I have to be going. I... I'll catch you around, Tezuka. You can call me Rin. I feel our relationship at this point is good enough to warrant this much. I was already turning around to make my exit, but she draws me back in. Fine then, I'm Hisao. Then you are. She looks at me with a. She looks at me hard in the eyes, but that. But but that intimidating feeling you get when someone stares at you isn't there. She looks like she's actually not looking at me at all. She blinks a couple of times, and I can't figure out whether my pause has just popped up between us out of nowhere. See you later, he said. There was something like a tiny, teeny smile there on her face, maybe. I quietly back out of the room as I shut the door in front of my face. I whisper to myself, what an intriguing person. From inside, I hear a muffled sing-song voice. I heard that... What did she hear? I jumped back at the sudden appearance of Misha, who, had, who I had not heard approaching despite the completely empty hallway. I saw, somehow, she had gone jumpy distance of me without making a sound. Creepy. It briefly reminded me of Kenji's nutty theory about what about a global feminist conspiracy, but I pushed that thought aside. <laughs> Shizune is standing slightly behind Misha, looks, looks aloof as she couldn't have heard the remark that drew Misha's attention, but Misha's visibly excited. No wait, more importantly, who's in there? There are no club meetings today. She tries to curiously peek past me, though the door prevents her from seeing anyway. What are you doing here? What do you, you took so long that we had to come and check what's wrong. God, that, that's no good, He chan She wags her finger at me scoldingly. I found a plywood, but everything else is still missing because you are tardy. Oh, uh, oh, sorry, er, I got the things here. I, I was just gonna bring them. I think you are to some kind of mischief, He chan Who was in there with you, I wonder? Me should sign something quickly to Shizune, pointing at her own a couple of times. 
She soon immediately pushes her way past me and opens the door with, to the classroom I just left. Can only imagine the shock she's experiencing. With diligence and attitude, the insolence of daring to deface the school property by sleeping on top of it must be too much for her to bear. And, and indeed, she stares at Rin, frozen apart, in place apart from slight, from the slight, but noticeably trembling over shoulders, suppressed from rage, I'm sure. Instead of blowing up, Shizune just takes a few breaths and adjusts her glasses and slams the door shut, turning to sign furiously on Misha. Maybe she did blow up, but I can't understand it. She shoots a very loaded stare at me too, as if somehow my fault that Rin was sleeping on one of the tables. <laughs> I hope she's not getting any funny ideas about the reason for my tardiness. Hello? Rin's voice comes from the other side of the door. It takes a few eye blinks to realize she might not have trouble opening it. I open the door and find Rin directly behind it, looking at us with half-interested, half-sleepy eyes. Hello? Miss Tezuka! Miss Tezuka, what do you think you're doing? You're absolutely not permitted to use prop school property for such a er, disrespectful activity. It, it is sure is suddenly very crowded in here. I didn't know I was this popular. It's hard to say whether she's happy or unhappy about this turn of events. At any rate, she ignores Shizune and Misha is scolding, so they have no choice but to drop the issue. Shizune taps Misha's shoulder and points at Rin, makes some quick signs. Popularity aside, please don't do that anymore. Anyway, how's your project going? Will it be done for the festival? Rin looks at them blankly, apparently he's under the pressure. She's doing his cold stare is putting on her. I keep wondering about that myself too. And? We'll think about it harder. As Misha signs her a reply to Shizuna, her face becomes an unsatisfied frown. Miss Tezuka, please try and take this seriously. It'll be a disaster if the wall looks like somehow threw their lunch onto it. Rin nods assertively. I will think about, will think more seriously. Misha actually giggles at that. Shizune doesn't. Not much in translation. She she just shakes her head and takes the materials from me and takes off with Misha in tow. Rin follows thoughtfully. As she it looks retreat, the student council duo. How rude. It's true though, I must finish my project before the weekend. There will be dire consequences if I don't. The end of the world as we know it. The end of the world as we know it. Oh. L like, the weeks, weekends usually are, but more dire. Much more dire. Maybe I'll postpone my nap to an unforeseen future. I'm about to ask what project she has and what are, what are these apocalyptic consequences, but she walks back into the art classroom. Since you have nothing to do, would you give me a hand? This paint can doesn't fit into my bag, but I need it. She kicks lightly at the huge can of paint that she's lying on the floor next to the table she was sitting and sleeping on. It lets out a dull clang. Being the gentleman I am, I naturally pick it up. Heavy. Yeah, sure, where do you need to take it? Away. And with that, she takes off to the hallway with me and the paint can falling. Following since there's little choice for either of us. The hallway is quiet and empty now, with Shizune and Misha gone, so we're to leave towards the stairwell, all to the other end. Every 10 to or 15 minute steps, I have to change the, the can from one hand to another because that th thin handle cuts into my palm. At least it keeps my arms from tiring too fast. Rin strolls beside me with an uneven pace that I have trouble matching, or maybe I am wa walking weird because of the extra weight. It seems that one of us is constantly walking too fast, too slow or too fast, and I can't figure out which. Two flights of stairs below, trouble appears in form of the head nurse and his fox-like grin. Ah, Mr. Nakai, what a happy coincidence, Tezuka too, of course. He nods courteously to Rin who does not acknowledge him back, and turns to me because, obviously, it's me who has some business with. There's something I forgot to mention on Monday. I nod and wait impassively. 
because I can't even begin to guess what he forgot. The feeling of a hand on de delving deeper in my skin doesn't make me feel enthusiastic about his interruption either. It's about your medication. Since you haven't been that long on your current medication, there might be some unexpected side effects which might require adjusting the dosage or even changing to an all another kind of medication. So we'll do a few tests regularly, but what I want from you is to keep an eye on everything in their condition that feels off, if you get what I mean. Nausea, headache, anything, and, and come and see me if something happens. Alright, so how are you? Everything fine? I give up at the drop cam and answering him, apparently this takes longer than my biceps can handle. I'm about to say something generic as an answer, but I realize how often I've done that lately. Other people have asked me that too, teachers and students here, my parents, visitors, the nurses, doctors at the hospital. Everyone seems to be concerned about that, it's natural for a hospital, but not so much for a school, except this school. This is a small school, and both of the student base at the faculty seem to be very tightly knit. At least that's the feeling I'm getting. And it's not the kind of school that gets transfer students too often. often. The thought sends shivers up my spine, but I give an extended generic answer anyway. That's very great, so also another thing. My sources tell me that you've been neither at the school track or not even at the pool, so I'd like to know if you've taken exercising like I asked. Of course I haven't. There's a wind crying in me feeling that I should have been running my ass off on the track since the very first day. Do you have people spying on me? Not as such, I just happen to know a few people. But that's not the issue here, so don't try and slip out of it. Well, I was actually just doing some improvised weightlifting as an exercise. I pick up the kennel, a few times bodybuilding, even though it's hard weighing down my sprung painfully. The stupid grin on his face disappeared from his face for a second. It comes back like it was never gone. Suzuki, would you give me a second? Without warning. Ah, and the nurse take, grabs me by the shoulder without w waiting and permission, which she didn't need in the first place, drives me aside. When I told you to exercise, I wasn't joking. I understand that you're still on your first week and all, but please don't ignore the importance of this. The reason I'm coming down on this hard on you is that habits are, are not easy to form. The more you slip and postpone, the harder it'll be. It's the same with everything like dieting. Can you promise me to take this more seriously from now on? Maybe no, I mean, give me a nasty sort of look when I say that, trying to make me take back the word. I mean, I don't know, I'm still trying to get used to the school. I promise to try, though. You're not being convin very convincing there, Giselle. Tip number one. Medical professionals are not amused if you take their advice lightly. What's up with him? As if a dare to would make it much of a difference. I didn't do anything at the hospital either. Yeah, okay, sorry. He, stuttered, he studies me for a moment and then shrugs, smiling again. Okay, that's more like it. If you go to the school track tomorrow morning, you'll meet my spy, who probably had no qualms offering consultation if you were to if you were to jog a bit. Consultation? See you around. He leaves with a wave of his hand and and with, and with no answer, and I walk to to Ren, who had been waiting idly leaning against the hallway wall and staring at me with a pelt lightning fixtures in the ceiling. Even when I approach, she doesn't move her eyes off them. Are you getting medications for your heart thingy? Are you listening? It comes out more accusatory than I intended, I accidentally gnashing out on her. But even so, I don't want her to start talking about it. I just met her. I don't know her. It's n not her business. The nurse seems to be happily ignorant about the c about confidentiality, too, talking about that kind of thing in public. But it's not its fault, is it? I look up at her, suddenly, suddenly feeling a bit guilty. The wrench is staring past my shoulder quizzically and head tilted like a bird's. <sighs> I don't know why this is so hard for me. It feels like there's some inexplicable lock that prevents me from being more upfront about this. Yeah, they're for my heart. Will they make you better? No, not really. They just make me a little less worse. Ren keeps looking at me for a while longer. She neither says anything further nor displays any kind of emotion I would discern. I'm thankful that she doesn't. I think I'm still not quite used to all this. At the hospital it was easy, but I still haven't noticed any sorted any of my feelings with having to live a normal life with like this disability. 
We leave the main building, and Rin leads us towards the dorm. We stop at the small patch of greenery in the front of the dorm building. The dorm is built on slightly elevated ground, with a wall that fe and a few trees that everyone has circled around every time they come or go. It's probably the only convenient design of the school. The entire wall is made from the same kind of bricks as the building itself has been covered with the same sort of painting. And we'll leave things off for right here. But before we're writing things off though, I'd like to remind you guys to like, comment, and share, and subscribe to help propel the channel growth forward. We've also got a... We, and to follow my socials, you can find them in the description below. And you can join the Discord server. It's completely free. It's all, The link to join is also in the description. And I live stream Mondays and Fridays at 8 p.m. PST. Sometimes a little earlier, depending on the day. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.